that. Um, technique. I said earlier on, find music that fits your technical level and be honest about it because you're going to have to deal with it later on the field. You should really be honest about your own assessment of your technical skills and therefore the choice of the music. Pick that music that, um, that fits you, your personality, that you think is going to be exciting enough for the audience to watch but also uh, that fits your technical skills of that moment. Of course, you're going to be hopefully growing and improving. Um, but you can always pick another bit of music at that point. So, yeah, let's see what I got about that. I told you before, I'm not that strong in the technical department. So. I have a piece of music I'd like to give some feedback on. Sure. Yeah, we'll do yeah, that yeah, a little yeah. bit. Yeah, we're gonna... We have a couple of... of we, have, we have room for that in, in a little bit. Okay. Allow me to... Um, it's not Where'd that big it? a book. Yeah. And it was age six, age six. I was 14, no wonder I wasn't getting it. <laughs> Me, it says. That's nice. <laughs> ABW, stupid little acronym, always be walking. It is, I think, the biggest and the best tool you have as a kite flyer on the demo field, on the competition field, to get yourself out of trouble. Not so much into trouble. It gets you out of trouble. It allows yeah. you speed control, which is almost the biggest weapon that you've got. And it's so easy. Mm -hmm. You're flying your kite, and I'm standing still, and my kite is flying from say, left to right, right to left for you guys, in a straight line. Now, if I take a step back as I'm doing that, and I stop, that kite is going to have a sudden acceleration as I stop, that kite is flying normal speed again. If I now walk forward real quick, that kite is going to crawl and maybe even fall. You can use that. It is your biggest weapon. Your legs are your biggest weapon. They are going to be faster and more powerful than anything your arms can do. That will allow your arms to not make gross motor movements, but fine motor movements, which is going to improve your precision on anything that you're, that you're executing. So that combination, tone it down on the arms and use your legs more, is I think the best technical advice that I could ever give anybody uh, on, on a kite field. I just have something to add. When you're walking, your kite is wobbling. So keep your hands together. Correct. And you see that very much. You see that the, the, the old competition flyers do that on, on big straight line figures. They're just walking their hands because that kite's going to be set in that line that you're, that you're sending it into could be a slightly diagonal line, depending on your original input, but it's a straight line. So that is it. It is, it is, your hands should almost be disconnected in a way from your body so that, that the movements that your body is making um, are not going to be sent through your hands to the kite, because it's going to be visible at that point. Always be walking. Again, biggest piece of advice that I can give. Quite you got to be mobile. Line, With being mobile comes, what are you being mobile on? If you're on the sand, barefoot it's a very good place to be. I see people with boots and I see people with big heavy shoes that they're, they're clogging around with. It's not going to help you being mobile. So be as light on your feet as possible and be as mobile as you possibly can be. And it, it will, it is a very simple trick, speed control, walking forward, walking backwards. It's super simple and it is very, very expressive. It allows you, it, it, it gives you not one tool, it gives you three, four tools in the, to expand your tool bag. And it's the simplest trick in the book and perhaps the most powerful because of it. So uh, going on to speed control, again a personal preference and I'm strictly talking about dual line kites. I'm a very poor quad line flyer, haven't done much with it at all. It's never, never been for me so I can't really speak for quads. Um, equipment choice, seven foot, eight foot kite, something that is large enough for you to, to, to precisely fly. It does not need to be a trick machine because trick machines typically are set very unstable, 
it's sort of like a Boeing 747 versus an F-16. They're both planes. One is set for stability and precision. The other one is set to do this a lot. Um, and that makes for not great precision in a, in a sport kite. So seven, eight foot wing of your choice. There's, there's a ton of good competition kites out there. For me, there's a lot of turbo bridles on kites. And what turbo bridles do is they adjust themselves to the angle in the wind. So if you have a turbo bridle, it's essentially a two-legged bridle that is, that is attached to it more legs on the, on the kite it, uh, as opposed to a traditional three-point bridle. So the bridle comes from upper leading edge, lower leading edge and center teeth to one toe point. Very stable. Um, the turbo bridle has, is, is, is hinging. It's a, it's a hinging toe point essentially. What that does is as your kite goes up, <coughs> it changes the angle of the bridle to where the nose of the kite sets itself back a little bit and the kite speeds up to compensate for the loss of speed as you go up in the wind window and the outside of the wind window. That's really cool for precision and speed control, auto speed control. So if you fly a big precision figure everywhere in the wind window, you don't have to work as hard to keep the kite at the same speed. But in my opinion, it's detrimental for flying to music because the speed control is being taken away from you. The kite's doing it itself. Um, and I want to do it. I want to be able to do it with my legs. And I don't want the bridle to auto set because maybe I want to go slow on the outside or I want to go fast on the outside and then I want to go slow to the inside. I want to be in control of that decision-making process. Um, so for me, uh, a three-point bridle, very classical three-point bridle, is where it's at at all times. I've never been able to, to work well with a turbo bridle. Same thing with, with coming out of a trick, a 3D trick into, into stable flight, uh, flight line again. Mm -hmm. There seems to be always some kind of wobble or some kind of the bridle is bouncing around a little bit before coming out of, say, a flat spin to a straight line before it, it, it locks into that straight line again. So, again, just sharing a personal preference, and I know that there's a ton of, of, of turbo bridles out there. So I'm, I'm bound to have people disagreeing with me on this. And that's cool. Um, line length. I don't fly anything shorter than 100 foot if I can get away with it. Preferably I fly in 120 foot this lines. This is outside. This is outside, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Impressive inside. Again, if I can get away with it, it, it just allows me, it gives me a large, lofty word, it gives me a large canvas to paint on. It gives me, I can paint a, or draw or whatever. A, Finger paint, let's call it yeah. finger paint. <laughs> finger paint. <laughs> I can finger paint picture. a very large picture that way. Also, things don't happen to me that fast. Um, if I fly a line from left to right, 120 foot lines, I got a good six seconds to go from left to right for you know a normal six mile an hour wind. If I do the same thing on 80 foot lines, that goes to about three to four seconds that things happen really fast at that point and you want to be in control. You don't want the surroundings, including the kite and its speed, being in control of you. So that's why 120 foot lines preferred. Sometimes my surroundings are dictating me uh, a shorter line set because the ocean is there, a building is there, a tree line is there, or <laughs> audience is downwind of you. Um, 100 foot lines, if, if you must. I personally would not go any shorter. I'd rather be a little bit more build in by, by, my, by my field and still be able to fly 100 foot lines than that I go on, on, on 65 foot lines and buy myself the extra room. That is a person, very much a personal preference and I can totally see how other people are like, yeah, no, I'll go to 80 foot and I got more room to breathe and I feel more confident and calm and, and about that. Uh, obstacles, obviously, hard packed sand. You, you, We've all been there, I think. You do a landing on hard packed sand and the kite just slips away. You do a tip stand on hard packed sand and the kite just does something else, just slides away. Uh, if you can, fly on soft. Uh, grass, good too. Um, watch out for, for things like rough grass. And I, can't, I can't believe we put this in here, but I, I, oh, I vented a Island. kite at Antelope Island because the grass there is so tough that I'm setting my kite down and I'm leaning back 
and the grass is sticking through my coat. Oh, I cannot no. believe it. Whoa. <laughs> it happens. That's, funny, That's why it's in here. <laughs> I don't want it to happen to you. It's the dumbest thing ever. But be aware of, of, of stupid little things like hard grass or brush or stuff like that. Dandelions. It, yeah. I Cow believe it. <laughs> well, it's, it's ridiculous, but it happens, and you want to be aware of it. Fur <laughs> casing. So yeah, that's that's. I got one more thing on on location. It has more to do with the flyer, I think. And I'm not so sure if it works for me again. I'm I, 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 I'm fairly certain that a lot of people are going to disagree with me on this. If we're flying a new routine, if we're trying to assess if this is going to work for me, um, uh, or is the routine going to work for me, or is the routine that I pen down on it. Is that going to work for me? Don't go out in crappy wind on a crappy location. Be very picky and spoiled and go for perfect wind and at the biggest beach you can get your hands on. Um, what that will do is it will give you the most honest assessment of that routine at that moment. There's no other variables that are messing with you. Huh, that didn't go well. Why was that? Was that because I'm on the downwind side of a big building and the wind is going like this instead of like that? Um, you will have fewer sessions on that new music, which, which may sound detrimental, but I believe the quality of those sessions is so much better that it more than makes up for it. Um, it's sort of like in any scientific process, if you need to change something, uh, you change one variable. You don't change two variables or three variables because you don't know anymore where a, a possible change may have come from. So I will never fly a new routine that I'm still trying to figure out what I'm going to do with it, do I need to change my lines here, do I need to change my, uh, my routine, do I need to change my music? Is it, ever, is it even going to work for me? I will never fly it in, in, in what I consider crappy conditions because of that reason. And the crappy conditions will come to you. You will, yeah. you will find you yourself in locations on, on event days where you're like, alright, this is the date, this is the time, this is the place, now you have to fly it. You'll find yourself in crappy conditions enough. You don't need to look for them necessarily, and certainly not when you're still building up that routine. Now, of course, if you if you have your routine all nailed down, you are confident about it. You've you've flown the heck out of it in, in, in good conditions. Yeah, test yourself. Go out on a crap day and see how it holds up. But don't start out with that. That's just my advice. And 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 the counterpoint to that, I think, is people say, uh, well. Go out, go out in everything. You've got to be able to fly in everything. You've got to be able to perform in everything. And, and, and I agree with that as well. Just not in the very early stages of building that routine, which is very specifically what we're talking about right now. Well, because if you can't analyze it, you're going to get discouraged. Yeah. Yes. I mean, because you're going to go, I just, I'm no good. Yeah, that's true. And it's not you. <laughs> Well, it could be. Possibly. But <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. yeah. But, that, but that's that, that, that interpretation that, you know, you've got to build your confidence. And, and build your confidence by getting all the positives you can out front. Yes. And then deal with the challenges later. Yeah. That is, that is my viewpoint on this. A scientific approach. I like that. <laughs> One thing at a time. Well, it's sort of, it's, it's also, we share a similar background in that as far as what, what we do for a living in a way. So sure. that's how we think, directly. Right. So, again, it's, it's, it's maybe not for everybody, it's certainly the way as it has proven itself for me. And while you're in good condition and at the beginning of your training, have a camera on behind you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Very good point. I have, Everyone I have never carries done camera that. nowadays with your phone. Exactly. Just record I, yourself. I've never, I've never done that because that was sort of pre-camera when I. Yeah, when I, you're old. <laughs> <laughs> pre-camera stuff is what I said. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, you're completely right. When I see that now, uh, in second thing, second thing, don't be disturbed. When you video, look at the video. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you got to tell you many things, but <laughs> thank you. No, you're completely correct, and I didn't, I wouldn't have gotten there because it's not been part of my training method. It's not been part of my build-up. But you're completely correct. I feel like that a camera is is a tool to accelerate your progress. Absolutely. Like having judges and they tell you everything you did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I can't. <laughs> The but the camera is satisfied. absolutely objective, yes. and, and the judges... That's why I say don't get disturbed by that. Yeah, <laughs> good point. 
It's true. And the judges may or may not be right. Let's be honest. Mm.